Hallelujah. We're going to talk about today accountability according to Torah. Accountability according to Torah. And look at um, the need and the value in having healthy relationships. Again, the need and the value in having healthy, healthy relationships. Um, when we think about relationships, you know, automatically we tend to go to that of a man and a woman. We, we tend to go to that of husband and wife. We tend to go to that place. But truly, Yahweh, in creating everything, and I said this before, He put relationship in everything. So relationship is what gravity is. Relationship is what holds the stars and the heavens in place. Their relationship. It's just simply how one thing relates to another and the, the level on which they uh, interact. Um, so um, we're going to look at that and truly what the Torah, what the Torah teaches us and, and wants us to do as it pertains to accountability and having healthy relationships. So let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 22. We're going to do a bit of reading at the beginning here. Deuteronomy chapter 22. We're going to start at verse 1 and we're going to read down to verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 22. Start at verse 1. And it reads, And when you see your brother's ox or his sheep straying away, you shall not hide yourself from them. Return them to your brother without fail. And if your brother is not near you, or if you do not know him, then you shall bring it to your own home, or your own house, and it shall be with you until your brother seeks it. Then you shall return it to him. And so you do with his donkey, and so you do with his garment, and so you do with whatever your brother loses, which he has lost and you have found. You are not allowed to hide yourself. When you see your brother's donkey or his ox fall down on the way, you shall not hide yourself from them. Help him. Raise them without fail. A woman does not wear that which pertains to a man, nor does a man put on a woman's garment. For whoever does this is an abomination to Yahweh your Elohim. When you come upon a bird's nest along the way, in any tree or on the ground, with, your, with, with young ones or eggs, with the mother sitting on the young or on the eggs, do not take the mother with the young. Let the mother go without fail, and take the young for yourself, so that it might be well with you, and that you shall prolong your days. When you build a house, then you shall make a par parapet for your roof, so that you do not bring blood guilt on your house when one falls from it. Do not sow your vineyard with different kinds of seed, lest the yield of the seed which you have sown and the fruit of your vineyard be defiled. Do not plow with an ox and a donkey together. Do not put on a garment of different kinds of wool and linen together. So, as we read down, it seems like we're talking about very disconnected things here. It appears that we're looking at very disconnected thought processes or, or ideas. And truly, they actually have a very strong connection. Very, very strong. And Yahweh is saying something here to Moshe. And, 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 and what he's saying is getting right down to the root of what relationship is. Right down to the root. And we're going to go through this and, and really look at what it's saying to us. 
So when we started out, it's talking about your brother's ox, and you know, if he loses his ox, he strays away, that you are to return it to him. If he's not there, you should hold it until he gets there and then return it to him, even if you don't know who he is. So this again, and I've said this before, Torah was created to institute utopia. Utopia, very simply, is a perfect society, a flawless society, a place in which his people could dwell and not have to worry about anything that all needs were provided for, both the young and the old were happy, both the rich and the poor were filled. This is what utopia is, and this is what the Torah was created to do. This is what Yahweh was doing when he brought the children of Israel out into the wilderness and began to teach them how to be a nation. He was teaching them how to be a perfect nation before him. So as we look at this, this relationship here is between two people who can know each other or may not know each other. And as he said, if you do see this happening, that you should return the oxen to your neighbor. But the very, the, the, the thing that really stood out to me was when he says in verse 3, and so you do with his donkey or his garment or whatever your brother loses whatever so this isn't just about the donkey right this isn't just about oh well you know you lost something and I'm gonna return it to you but it seems like there's something more here so that's what we're looking at we're looking at what 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 is that truly what is that and as we continue to read down, now it starts to talk about a woman wearing what doesn't pertain to a man. And that again seems like it's out of left field, right? Just seems like, woof, where'd that come from? That doesn't make any sense with what we just finished reading. However, look at what it continues to go into. It says then, if you come upon a, egg, a, a, a bird's nest, don't take the mother with the eggs. Then it goes in and it says, now if you build a house, Make it so that it's not a danger to someone. And you know, and it goes in and says, don't sow your vineyard with, with different types of seed. Then it says, don't wear different types of garments and, and don't plow with an ox and a donkey. That's what's going to help make the connection for us. What happens if you get an ox and a donkey plowing? It's going to be off balance. It's going to be off balance. There's an inequity there. There, There is an inadequacy there. Is a donkey good for plowing? Yes. Is an ox good for plowing? Yes. But he said, don't yoke a donkey and an ox. Don't plow with a donkey and an ox. So to go back to, to what he's doing here, he's already kind of laid the foundation with telling us um, to look out for your brother, to really and truly look out for your brother. So before we go uh, much deeper into it, I want to read a scripture. And we're going to come back to that, that Deuteronomy. So keep your hand on there if you got a marker. Keep it on that so that we can uh, easily turn back to that. That's going to be uh, kind of our... our uh, our leading text. So we're going to come back to that a few times, okay? Um, so let's go to Genesis chapter 4, verse 9. Genesis chapter 4, verse 9. Genesis chapter 4, verse 9. And it reads, And Yahweh said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's guard? I do not know. Am I my brother's guard? And I looked up that word guard, and guess what it's the same word as? And you shall guard the Sabbath. Same word, same strength and power. Guard. Which is Shema. Shema. Shamar, I'm sorry, ends with the rest. 
uh, Shamar. It's uh, H. Let me see. I wrote it down here. H8104. Shamar. And it means to keep. It means to guard. It means to give heed. Take heed to. It means to be charge of, to watch over, to ward. Okay? So, this is what Cain asked. Am I my brother's guard? Am I my brother's watchman? Am I my brother's protector? Because that word also means protector, shamar. So, if that then was the question, I believe that now let's let's turn back to Deuteronomy. I believe that in that 22nd chapter of Deuteronomy that truly Yahweh has given the answer right here. And that in essence, the answer to that question is yes, Cain. You are your brother's guard. Why? Because if your brother's ox goes away, then you should be the one to bring him back and restore him. You're restoring your brother. So let's let's turn now and look at the part, the latter part of that uh, reading that we did. We're going to go down to when it says, uh, "Do not." Uh, wait a minute, I'm too high up. Uh, Ten. Verse 10, do not plow with an ox and a donkey together. And again, we just got finished talking about things that are happening. And he's talking about sowing these vineyards with different types of seed. He's talking about taking a mother, thus cutting off your own life. Why? Because if there's no mother, there can be no reproduction of life, right? So that's why he said that. That's why he said so that your days, you can prolong your days. Now let's take that, keep that concept, keep that concept going in your head. Let's turn to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. And we're going to turn to the third, fourth, I'm sorry, fourth chapter. I'm going to turn to the fourth chapter of Ecclesiastes. Fourth chapter. And we're going to start reading at the ninth verse. We're going to read the ninth and the tenth verse. Ecclesiastes. And remember what we're talking about. We're talking about accountability according to the Torah. We're talking about healthy relationships accountability according to the Torah and healthy relationships let's go and read the ninth and 10th verse in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and it reads two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor for if they fail or if they fall one lifts his companion up but woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. He has no one to help him up. So he's in this alone. He has no one there. So again, we're talking about accountability and healthy relationships, right? There's something that's going to tie in here. If we yoke an ox and a donkey, what do we have? They are what? unequally yoked. They're unequally yoked. So it's important to have healthy relationship. The right kind of relationship. To be yoked together with the right kind of person. So let's now let's now go to uh, Luke. Let's go to Luke chapter 10. I'm going to start tying this in together. And what are we talking about, y'all? Accountability. Anybody else listening? <laughs> what are we talking about, y'all? Accountability. All right. And healthy relationships, right? Healthy relationships. Luke chapter 10. 
Luke chapter 10. And we're going to read the first couple of verses. And you're sure if you ever need to understand what's going on in the Torah, go to Yeshua. Luke chapter 10, we're going to read verse 1 and 2. And after this, the master appointed 70 others, meaning besides the 12. And after this, the master appointed 70 others and sent them out two by two ahead of him into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest indeed is great. But the workers are few. Therefore pray the master of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Again, the harvest indeed is great, but the workers are few. Therefore pray the master of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. And how did he send them out? Two by two. Two by two. Two by two. So, I think this is getting kind of back to this whole concept of if your brother, his ox, goes astray, and then later on in that reading it says anything. It says whatever. Whatever your brother has lost. Anything. So then, then we think about it. The scripture says that that two are better than one, and it says a three-corded strand is hard to break. So now we begin to think now in terms of accountability and healthy relationships. Part of unequally yoking is the donkey can't hold the ox accountable. Why? The donkey don't know what the ox is supposed to do. The donkey ain't supposed to do it the same way the ox does. Why? Because they're different. So if there is right relationship, if there is healthy relationship, if there is equity, if there is adequacy, then we don't have to worry about this off-balanced approach to life. Amen? Amen. So let's go now to um, Galatians. Because this is going to help us make make all of these thoughts come together and start to make sense to you. Alright, we're going to turn over to Galatians. We're going to chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. We're going to read verse 1 and 2. Keep in mind what we read in Deuteronomy. Keep in mind all of those different things and thoughts. And real quick, I'm going to just recap them. It started off, the ox went astray, saying your brother is to bring that ox to his home or return it back to his master. Then it says it's the same for his garment or the same for whatever your brother has lost and you have found. And then it goes in to talk about even a woman wearing not what pertains to a man and a man not wearing that which pertains to a woman. And then it talks about the, uh, the eggs, the, the, chi the, the uh, bird, the young, and the egg. If there is young and egg with the mother sitting on it, don't take the mother. Okay? You have to keep all of these concepts going in your head. Don't take the mother, but take the young and leave the mother so that your days are prolonged. Then it talks about if you build a house, don't build it dangerously or, or, or in negligence so that if someone goes on the roof, they are, are, are killed and the blood guilt is now upon the house. And then talks about the donkey and the ox being plowed, plowing together. Do not yoke a donkey and an ox, okay? So keep all of those rolling in your head. Now let's read Galatians 6, chapter 6 verse 1 and 2. Brothers, if a man is overtaken 
in some trespass. What does that word say again? If a man is overtaken, overtaken, if a man is overtaken in some trespass, you, the spiritual one, set such a one straight in a spirit of meekness, looking at yourself, lest you be tried too. Bear one another's burdens, and so complete the Torah of Messiah. And so complete the Torah of Messiah. So if we begin to now weave all of this together, think about it like this. There's something in Deuteronomy that's speaking directly to stewardship. It's speaking to stewardship in such a way that you are doing the right thing by something. Okay? Everybody get that? You're doing the right thing. We always think that stewardship means that I just simply take care of it. It goes much further than that. Being a good steward of a car isn't just simply paying your car note. Being a good steward of a car is paying your car note. It's getting the oil changed. It's having the tires rotated. It's cleaning the car. These are all the things, doing the right thing. It's also not using it for a purpose that it's not intended for, okay? That's all a part of stewardship. Using something for what it was supposed to be used for. That's why he said, women don't wear what pertains to a man. Why? That's not what it's supposed to be used for. Men don't wear that which pertains to a woman. Why? Because that's not what it's supposed to be used for. So all in Deuteronomy is talking about using something for its proper use, okay? And stewardship and accountability go hand in hand. Hand in hand. And let me explain how. Let me explain how. If I, by myself, I'm in charge of something. I'm in charge of keeping track of money, we'll say. I'm in charge with collecting it. I'm in charge with recording it. I've got all access to it. And no one else has any access, has no any, any kind of, of, of way of seeing what's happening. What does that represent? <coughs> so, big conflict of interest, right? Why? Because it's not my money, yet I am completely and totally personally responsible for it. Thus, if I decide that I want to do something besides what it's supposed to be used for, who's going to see? Who's going to see, right? Stewardship and accountability. Stewardship and accountability. So what does that then beg to, to, to question? When we are in a not so good, we'll say an unequally yoked relationship, when we're in an unhealthy relationship, again, I'm not, this is not just to husband and wife. This is not just a male and female relationship. This is everything. This is friends, this is family, this is places to go, this is things being done, anything. This is why we had such a broad array in Deuteronomy, such a broad array of things. It talked about everything under the sun and it seems like it's unrelated, but it all goes back to stewardship, using it for its intended purpose and accountability. Now, not only should you use it for what its intended purpose is, there should be a level of accountability to make sure that it's actually done that way. So if you have this unhealthy relationship and you are in a place where you, you, you're, you're, you're either doing something that's unhealthy to you or you're with people that are unhealthy to you, what begins to happen? This is the ox and the donkey. They can't hold you accountable. They can't hold you accountable. That action is not holding you accountable. 
that person is not holding you accountable. That place is not holding you accountable. So what happens? You very easily get out of line. And you very easily, where it says, if a man is overtaken in some trespass. Galatians. If a, if a man is overtaken in some trespass. And if there is no spiritual ones, there's no one to set them straight. If there's no spiritual ones, there's no one to set them straight. So the first place we've got to get is understanding how important it is to have healthy relationships. Again, we can't stop at the boyfriend-girlfriend thing. We've got to go much far, farther than that. We've got to go into every aspect of our lives. We've got to look at the things that we do, the places we go, the people we associate with. We've got to look at all of that to understand if we are in a place where our relationships are healthy enough. Because if you don't have a healthy relationship, there's no accountability. Quite frankly, there is no accountability. So if we go now to the next level of that, that accountability now becomes a level of maturity. It becomes a level of maturity in this. And these, these are just a couple of things that, that can be a stumbling block. A stumbling block to your growth. A stumbling block to, to you getting where Yahweh wants you to be. A stumbling block to, to, to achieving that which Yahweh has for you. Um, and these are things to be aware of. In accountability, sometimes, y'all, you get your heart broken. In accountability, a lot of times, y'all, you get your feelings hurt. In accountability, y'all, sometimes you just gotta, you gotta eat crow. I don't know how else to say it. When it comes to accountability, there's sometimes that you just gotta sit and grit your teeth and take it. Now that's one side of accountability. And this is the thing that can stop your blessing. This is the thing that can absolutely cut off and stunt your growth. I promise you. I promise you it will. Haughtiness and pride. Haughtiness and pride. You know what? You're not going to receive the accountability. So this is especially, this is something that we especially want to look out for and beware of when you are the one that's being imparted into. Okay? If you're being imparted into and your reception of that is cut off simply because of your pride, you can't tell me that or your haughtiness. I'm better than you. Your pride, your haughtiness, your boastfulness now prevents you from being able to. You know, there's something that I learned in music. One of my teachers, he said, listen to everything. It is just listen to, listen to all styles. Listen to all types of artists. It doesn't matter if you feel like you're more talented. It doesn't feel like you're, you're more gifted. It doesn't feel like if it's not your style, listen to it. You know why? Because what happens is you glean. You glean. And you glean. And as you are gleaning, you're growing. And you're growing. And you're growing. So if at some point you say... Well, because I'm beyond this level, I won't receive from anyone. I've actually heard someone say, if you're not, because I am a pastor, if you're not a pastor, I can't receive from you. You have to be on my level. You know, if you go to work, because I'm a supervisor, if you're not a supervisor, I can't learn from you. I can't receive from you. That is the easiest way to stunt your growth. We always have to be willing 
to receive. That's so important to accountability. Extremely important to accountability. Now, here's the other aspect of that. If you're the person that has to give, if you're the one that it says, the, the, the spiritual ones, says the spiritual ones are to restore that one, then sometimes, y'all, being that person is tough. Because being that person, you've got to shed, you've got to shed fear. And you've got to shed prejudgment. And when you think about fear and prejudgment, if Yahweh has put you in a position where you are equally yoked, again, we're not talking husband-wife all the time, but you're equally yoked, this is a healthy relationship, then your maturity level and the person or the situation that you are trying to help and correct and redeem, you then should have the, not have fear, but you should have the courage, you should have the understanding and the wisdom, wisdom is key, in how to approach that person, situation, place, thing, whatever it is, so that you can give and restore because there's somebody on both sides of this in Galatians. There's someone, there's a man, says a man is overtaken in some trespass. And then it says, you the spiritual ones. So there's somebody on the other side that has to reach down to pick that brother up. So truly, if we go back now to the concept of, of, of what Yeshua did, how many did he send out? 70 and how did he send them out groups of twos because if one falls there's another there so what does that represent one if they understand that they're in a healthy relationship then when that one that has fallen falls he doesn't say turn around I don't want you to see me while I'm down he doesn't say, I got this, don't worry about it, I'll get up on my own. But he says, I need you. And the other doesn't say, <laughs> you fell. Let me remind you that you fell. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to leave you down there so you can learn your lesson. But no, he says, let me restore you. Let me redeem you. So now the two, I'm going to call them the, 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 the killers. The two killers, we can move out the way. We can move the pride and the haughtiness out the way of the one who has fallen to say, I got it, I got it, I'll get up, get out my way. Because he's got to first figure out, or she's got to figure out first, that this person is not out to get me. So really, a lot of times, our haughtiness and our boastfulness is in ourselves. It's in our own mind. Somebody else just trying to help you, and you like, man, you're just trying to look at me while I'm down. Wait a minute, I'm trying to help you up. Amen. You need the help? Receive it. Oh. Receive it. Because truly, they're not there to hinder, but to help. Now, again, you're the person that's now having to help. It's not time for the other killer to come in. The other killer, which is fear and prejudgment. Man, if I say something, he might get mad at me. Or that's too uncomfortable of a conversation. Or, you know, prejudgment. He ain't gonna receive it anyway. Man, she gonna tell me to get out of her face. Man, he ain't gonna, you know, so if you prejudge and operate in the spirit of fear, what do you abort? Both of you all's progress. You abort both of your progress. So let's go back and I want to reread just that little piece in Genesis where it says, am I my brother's guard? And we can very easily answer that and the answer is, Yes. yes. Okay, let's read this entire flow of, of scripture again. And you should see it in, in, in a slightly different light as we read through it. 
and you will be finished. Deuteronomy chapter 22. And again, pre, just kind of presetting accountability. And this is Torah, guys. This, this is why. I mean, I, I am a firm believer that Yahweh put everything, every concept, every concern, every everything that would come up. Why? Because he spoke it once. Why? Because his answer to Moshe was, I am that I am. I don't have to redo anything. Yahweh never had to come back. Y'all, think about this. He destroyed life on the earth. Except eight people. And he still didn't have to recreate it. He don't have to redo nothing. He himself caused the flood. And when the flood was over, guess what? There was trees and grass and grapes and pomegranates and animals running around and people. He didn't have to recreate anything. So truly I believe that what he put into his Torah sustains us. So let's read it from this aspect. Accountability and healthy relationships. And remember that stewardship and accountability go hand in hand and that that Accountability, make sure that you are properly using the proper use, the proper use of whatever that, that thing is. So let's read this. Deuteronomy 22, and we're going to read down again. When you see your brother's ox or his sheep straying away, you shall not hide yourself from them. Return them to your brother without fail. And if your brother is not near you, or if you do not know him, then you shall bring it to your own house. And it shall be with you until your brother seeks it. Then you shall return it to him. And so you do with his donkey. And so you do with his garment. And so you do with whatever your brother loses. If your brother loses his dignity. If your brother loses his righteousness if your brother loses himself if your brother loses his way you are to restore and redeem your brother accountability and stewardship and you are to do it in the spirit of meekness the spirit of meekness and just continuing the reading Anything which he has lost and you have found, you are to, you are not allowed to hide yourself. In other words, don't ignore the situation. When you see your brother's dunk, your his ox fall on the way, you shall not hide yourself from him, from them. Help him raise them without fail. A woman does not wear that which pertains to a man, nor does a man put on a woman's garment. For whoever does this is an abomination to Yahweh. It's not its intended use. When you come upon a bird's nest along the way, in any tree or on the ground with young ones or eggs with the mother sitting on the young or on the eggs, do not take the mother with the young. Let the mother go without fail and take the young for yourself so that it might be well with you and that you shall prolong your days. Stewardship. Stewardship. It's intended use and in not being greedy, not being over overzealous, not overusing. When you build a house, then you shall make a parapet for your roof so that you do not bring blood guilt on your house when one falls from it. That's accountability to your brother. Do not sow your vineyard with different kinds of seed, lest the yield of the seed which you have sown and the fruit of your vineyard be defiled. It's not its intended use. Stewardship. Stewardship. Do not plow with an ox and a donkey together. Accountability. Do not put on a garment of different kinds of wool and linen together. Again, it's proper use. Amen.
Alright, any questions? Any comments? I have a question. Yes. I, I guess I was just trying to figure out what the stewardship...